Hey there, thanks for tuning in to DocBooks. I'm Chris, and well, our 100,000 subscriber milestone is coming up. And to celebrate this, I put out a poll asking you, the viewers, what you wanted to see for our milestone anniversary video. So there were basically a few choices, but the top two choices were an updated tour of the entire collection and a new Lego city to be built in my entire room. And to be honest, the votes really swung towards the city, although it was pretty evenly divided between a tour and a city. So I figured, you know what? I already wanted to do a city for a long time. Why not just do both? For our 100,000 subscriber milestone, we will be actually doing a full tour. And that full tour will include a city, which theoretically will go right here. So here's how this is going to work. Throughout the course of this video, you can see right now a flash forwards to what the new city is going to look like on screen. But coming back to what it is like right now, I've got this big open space in my collection and I figured, you know what? This seems like a lot of space that isn't being used. Why don't we get a little bit of maybe a shelving unit, something similar to the shelves we have here, but actually put a massive city on top of it, kind of similar to the space that we have here. Now for my LEGO City, there are almost too many options to go through. And given that I have about a three foot by eight foot space, I want a walkway here. I definitely want to have these sets still displayed on this side of the wall, so we're not going to get rid of those. And I do want a little bit of a walkway here so I can of course pull out each of these shelves because each of these do have to come out. This is kind of the space we're working with, which means I have to be pretty selective about what we're going to do. Now, the obvious thing that we're going to include here, first of all, are all of the modular buildings. So up top here are every single LEGO modular building. You can basically see every single one of them that has come out since the very beginning with the cafe corner in 2008. They're not quite in order here, but they will be put in some semblance of an order. We've also got some kind of other random buildings as well, like the Doctor Strange Sanctum Sanctorum is basically a modular building in its own right. And then coming on over here, We've got some of the other buildings, like the Marvel Daily Bugle. That one is a little bit different, so we'll see if we want to fit it in. And Ninjago City sets, which are very different. They share the same modular footprint, but they kind of act as their own thing. Now, these are some of my favorite sets ever. I think these are probably some of my favorite sets that LEGO has ever put out. So I would love to put them in my own city, but it really just depends on if it works with the aesthetics because obviously one thing is that these are all sitting on top of water and they have a canal that's kind of elevated over the canals near the bottom of the city and not really any of the modulars are set up to do that. So it really is going to depend on if it works for the aesthetics. Now, this may be a fairly controversial choice, but one thing that I definitely know that I'm going to be doing is using the brand new LEGO City 2021 onwards system of road plates for this particular setup. Now, I know a lot of folks are gonna be wondering why exactly I did that and how I came across this choice. You can see some of the plates right here. So this style of plate is the one that we're going to be using for the city. And honestly, I kind of just figured that these are just a little bit easier to configure, especially in a grid. I really did want to integrate a lot of the newer Lego city sets into this. So I think it'd be really cool to use the new road plate system. And I think I kind of like these better than the original road plates, just in terms of the thickness and the ability to actually customize them. That may be sacrilege for some, but that is the decision I am sticking with. So we will see exactly how that works. I believe fellow YouTuber Jang Bricks put out a video on how to make those new road plates compatible with things on thinner base plates like the modular buildings. So I definitely want to use some of the tips and tricks in that video to make my own city. And finally, there is a couple things that I would like to have, but I don't know if we're going to have room. For instance, this entire drawer here is basically just filled with a ton of different trains, from the newest trains that LEGO put out just last year to some of the oldest trains, like the Santa Fe engine down there. There's a lot of great trains here, and I think it'd be really cool to have a train layout. I feel like they're kind of wasted just sitting in the shelf here, and I've been wanting to do something with my trains for a while. However, it really is just gonna boil down to space because again, I want to have all the modulars, as many roads and kind of city stuff that I can. And then if we still have room for trains, we'll put them in. But again, we're gonna really have to see because we're gonna be working with a fairly limited space. I know this, I mean, to me, this seems like a lot of space from like here to here and all of this, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be filled up very, very quickly as soon as we start putting the modular buildings on. So we'll see how much space we have after those. And it'd be nice to have a train if we can. 
Now, one thing that we could do is that there was a Bricklink A Full Designer program set that kind of was a modern version of a monorail. It was using roller coaster tracks, but you can actually see it's the Skyline Express right here. I feel like that might be an easier alternative to use. I also can very easily just get more roller coaster tracks to have it go around my city. So this could be what we would have instead of a train. I do really like the aesthetics of it. So that is one possibility. And of course, we do actually have the older style of Lego monorail, that is the airport monorail, which is the probably the rarest monorail they've done so far, is up top there. Now, that would look really good in the city. Obviously, getting more monorail track might be pretty expensive, so it really just depends on if that fits with the layout. And while we do have the other space monorails as well, like the Unitron and Futron ones, those are more of a space aesthetic, so I don't really want to mess with the track there. We're going to leave those as is for now and really just try to focus in on the Lego city stuff. So there are a lot of things here. And again, there are three big themes I want to include. The modular buildings, I want to include city, and I also want to include friends because friends, honestly, I feel has much better buildings and more realistic stuff than Lego city has ever done before. The friends buildings are some of the best buildings that Lego has ever done. And I definitely want to include them in my city. So we're going to have to wait and see exactly how these all fit. Now, just looking at some of the buildings I have here, we've got a lot of city buildings. I believe they're just kind of crammed into here. Obviously, you've got kind of the town plan type set from 2009, which would be cool to include. And I've got, I definitely have some more city buildings around this area. You've got some hidden side stuff too that has some realistic buildings. So we're definitely gonna have a lot to work with, not a lot of room. So we're gonna have to optimize this and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. I've talked a lot about setup, but now it's time to go over to Ikea and find myself something similar to what I have here actually. Where you can see I have my massive AquaZone layout, but it'd be nice to get something around like this length for the city itself, the width is also quite good. So again, like three feet by eight feet and just put it along here. That would be fantastic. I can't wait to see what this is gonna look like. Now you've already seen it probably by the thumbnail, but I'm so, so excited. This is a multi-week endeavor. So this video will be filmed probably over the course of like multiple different days and weeks because it's gonna be a crazy endeavor just starting a city from scratch right here. But I'm confident we can make it happen, so let's just go on ahead. We'll pop over to Ikea and see what we can do. Let's go. Of course, at Ikea, I had to pick up a copy of the LEGO official branded Ikea set, something that I still can't really believe exists. This is just something interesting, but I realized that I could actually potentially use some of it in the city itself, mostly just to raise things up, raise buildings up at different elevations, and I definitely want to incorporate more in my future city. But of course, I was there for a reason, and after buying a ton of Cadillac's bookcases, 10 to be exact, I loaded them all up and it was time to actually build them all out and put them in the car and be ready to build. And so, months later, literally months, the city was done. Finally, at long last, I have not necessarily completed my LEGO city, but I've gotten it to a point where I'm pretty happy with where it is. There's still a lot more to go, but the funny thing is I was actually talking to my good friend Jonathan, aka Mini Superhero today about this, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to put out a video on my LEGO City until it's ready. And he was like, dude, in your eyes, it's never going to be ready. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You're totally right. Might as well put out a video now because I am planning some pretty major changes, so I figured why not actually put out a video on my massive LEGO City right now. So this video has been a pretty long time coming. I first promised to put out a video creating my massive LEGO city when I reached 100,000 subscribers, which actually happened back in March and April of this year. Actually though, I was filming LEGO Masters at the time, so when it happened, I didn't get a chance to make the video, but I actually already had most of the city made by that time, and the plan was always to just put out that video to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. But then I just kept it, kept getting sidetracked and I kept wanting to put in other types of buildings and make the layout better and change one or two things here and there. And eventually I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. Let's just like permanently delay the video until I'm happy with my city. And being happy with my city means that it's fully populated with cars, with vehicles, presumably with lights in every building, which like that's not going to happen anytime soon, as well as a full monorail going through the city also not gonna happen anytime soon and you know what it's gotten to the point where i'm like look this is a work in progress this city nowhere near done 
but hopefully some people get a chance to enjoy it and see exactly what it looks like with all the functions turned on, with the lights I do have turned on in the city, and get a chance to look at a minifigure eye view of the city itself before I actually take everything down and reconfigure the layout completely, which I'm going to be doing in a few months, so stay tuned for that, and let's jump into it. Now, my LEGO City is primarily made up of official LEGO sets. In fact, every single build here is an official LEGO model, except for one build which takes two copies of the LEGO Friends Botanical Garden and combines it into one, making it a massive modular. But even that is still using basically the footprint of an official LEGO set. Now, what's really cool about this is I do have a motorized train going around. It's the same train used in the BrickLink AFL Designer program, but I have motorized it. I've got a lot of Ninjago Easter eggs in here, superhero stuff, a mix of all sorts of different pop culture references, and a ton of LEGO roads going all around the city. This was so much fun to put together, and now I can't wait to give you a tour. First off, I've been kind of using this space as a rotating display area. First the Concorde was here, then the Concorde got knocked over and I lost a ton of the pieces to it somewhere in these shelves, so I do have to look through these shelves at some point. And then I had Gringotts on here, now I've got Bionicle prototypes and concept models here from Christian Faber as well as a Bionicle prototype up here, but we're going to remove all of that for the video because they don't really fit in the city, and then we can get to the actual tour. Much better. Let's get into it. We'll start with an overview of the city at night because that's when I feel like most of the really cool lights get a chance to, well, shine. This is a light kit I recently installed for Ninjago City Markets here, and you can see there is an entire Ninjago Town District where all of the different official LEGO Ninjago modular buildings have been lit up with different light kits from different companies, and they all form a really fun and fantastic display with the only one really missing being Ninjago City Docks, although I did put a little custom light in there just to to kind of add to the look and feel. I feel like Ninjago City Gardens here is a really good way to act as the cornerstone of the city itself. You've got so much detail to it, so many different lights and functions, but of course, things get very lively with Ninjago City Markets here being very, very flashy at night. Now moving inwards, each of the buildings does have some amount of lighting in them. The Lego store, of course, has to be fully lit up, just like a Lego store would. Uh-oh, there seems to be an explosion going on. In the Daily Bugle, off in the distance, we've got a red light in there as Green Goblin is bursting out of the building, causing quite a nuisance for everyone else. And of course, we have some other lights going on inside the boutique hotel here. There could be some sort of a party on the bottom floor. And inside Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum, we are glowing with all sorts of pulsating different colors of lights, which actually do change color. Perhaps Doctor Strange is performing some sort of an arcane spell in there. We will never know but all the colors do change within the sanctum and I made sure to have a color changing light in there because I felt that would be a really cool look to have. Moving around here, we've got some nice lights for the corner garage one really nice one just shining up the front door, as well as the town hall is fully lit with lights on the inside as well. Now we can go around. Some of the other buildings and establishments have closed down for the night, but of course the brick bank remains open with security lighting, and there seems to be some parties going on in the Lego Friends Heart Lake City Towers going on here with different colored lights going on. Of course, the construction workers never sleep, so the construction site for the newest modular building is currently being used and operated on right now, and even the LEGO Friends Tower has some lights on the downside just to allow people to come in and be able to explore the rest of the tower. Of course, this is a really cool view. I really love the way that the Ninjago cities look like fully lit up. I feel like they are very striking at night and really just make the city as a whole feel like it's coming alive. But now I think it's time to turn the lights on and see what the city looks like through the day with all the different districts. So, let's go. And voila, here we have the lights on and now the city is ready to be explored. To get around the city, we recommend taking a train in the Grand Central Station, where the train will go up the hill and all around the Ninjago District, bringing you around the city. Let's take a look at what that train looks like coming up the hill, going from the Grand Central Station and making its way up to the main district for the LEGO City itself. Going on up here, let's see that train going all the way around this corner, up the hill, going through the Heart Lake City District, and then down a ramp on the other side of the Financial District here, making our way over back to the train station, allowing the passengers to fully travel around the entire city. There that train goes, rounding the bend, but look out, 
There might be ninja battles going on on the top of the train. You never know what's going to happen in this grand city of duck bricks, where, as you can see, our intrepid ninja master Lloyd is chasing some enemies atop the train itself, making sure he gets all around the city in a speedy manner. And there he goes, zipping around the bend, and the train is ready to complete the next track. Now, in terms of some behind the scenes detail, this train is something I actually built streaming live, which was really, really fun to do, setting up the train tracks and really just trying to figure out the optimal angle to run this was so much fun to just try and figure out. And there you can see, that's where the train docks right at the station. The train station itself is an official LEGO set. This is the Bricklink Eiffel Designer Program Grand Central Station. It's one of the rarer LEGO items I have in the city. And I absolutely knew as soon as I saw pictures of this that I had to include the beautiful architecture in my city. It feels a lot like my journeys in Europe, just kind of seeing different types of train stations there. Studgate train station, which you can see. And of course, from the minifigure point of view, I'm gonna move the light to the side a little bit. You can actually go right on through the store and board the train, which is such a cool design to actually feel like you are inside the train station. From this angle, it really looks like you are in there waiting for your next train, which I think is so, so cool. And there the train goes, going up the hill and being ready for its next destination. And it's just so cool to be able to see this again from this angle. The Grand Central Station looks fantastic. Studgate Train Station is one of my favorite Lego sets ever. And you can see just how good the train looks like going through it, up that hill and continuing its journey around the entire city. Let's go ahead and let the train make a stop at the station right now. We'll just get a chance to see what that looks like and stop just on command. Now it is ready to receive the next passengers and to continue on our journey. And I feel like we should follow the movement of the train as we travel past the station itself and go on to the Ninjago District. Now this is the crossroads because the Ninjago District is originally part of a separate realm that has now merged with the realm of the standard Lego City. And while the regular civilians of Lego City are still trying to get accustomed to living alongside an entire cornucopia of colorful characters coming from all across the different realms of Ninjago, Imperium, and beyond, they are learning to coexist and integrate into the city itself. Ninjago City is a place where themes, eras, and timelines converge. Things that may not make any sense whatsoever, like clone troopers fighting stormtroopers, make perfect sense in the merged worlds of the crossroads. Here, we have the next generation of heroes and ninja training. You can even spot a Merlopian among them. Hydro Whipper Gang, rise up. All of these trainees are of course coming into battle and conflict with a tribe of mysterious scholars and ice warriors who hail from the Temple of the Ice, all the way up in the Mountains of Madness, all in the Wailing Alps, led by some mysterious villains, perhaps making a comeback in Ninjago history. Of course, we have all sorts of different characters from all different LEGO themes inhabiting this world of Ninjago. We've got some characters crossing over from Star Wars. That way, obviously, looks like he does some really great workouts there. You can see that one right there, a very, very fun one to add in the city. But we also have so many other characters as well. Lots and lots of different stories that I tried to include. We have a tribe of Lost Serpentine being reintegrated back into the streets. We again have some of those ninja trainees here. One of them seems to even be a fan of Kai wearing a Kai-themed welding mask. And of course, some of the Imperium soldiers are lurking, stirring up some trouble where they can. Now, Chima is part of this merged realm, so there are some Chima characters making their way around the city as well. Let me know what you can spot in terms of the city itself and any Easter eggs I didn't explicitly call out that you might be able to see just by moving around all of these different areas. Of course, Ninjago City does continue, and I just had to include a ton of little duckities. It is Duck Brick City after all, so all around Ninjago City, there are all sorts of little ducks hiding in the ponds. Try to let me know how many you can spot in the comments below because they are everywhere. Now, moving onwards from the Ninjago area, this is really where there is a divide between the city of Ninjago and really the city of Duck Bricks, which is most of the buildings over here. Now, the Duck Brick city is already starting to blend with many different merged realms. We have the city of Lanterns from Lego Monkey Kid making a way here. There is a mini monorail going around the city itself, which is a really cool design. Seems to be a bit branded with Pigsy's Noodles, so always good to see that. And of course, alongside it, there are some little different shops and displays from the world of Lego Monkey Kid, 
And as you continue alongside this particular display, you make your way up to Heart Lake City, where there are many different buildings from the LEGO Friends world colliding with LEGO City here. This is the newest LEGO Heart Lake community city here. This is one of the tallest towers to do, combining the kitchen set as well as the larger towers. And if we actually look at the overhead layout, there's a lot of nice eating space there and a nice little courtyard where minifigures can just relax and eat. Here we have a modular construction site, aka the next building is being constructed, and this is actually an actual official LEGO set as well. It is from the BrickLink AVIL Designer Program. Moving onwards to here, we have Unity Street. This is where the overhead train passes by, but you can see all sorts of details in Unity Street itself. Again, there's a party going on in this sole department here. Maybe they're having a moving in party because they just got some furniture from the furniture shop and moving into here. And we even have the Creator 3-in-1 mini modular buildings scattered throughout the builds here, at least as many as I could incorporate just to really cover up a lot of the gaps and squeeze in detail where I could. Moving onwards to here, there seems to be a Blacktron invasion. Watch out, there are Blacktron invaders from outer space taking over LEGO City, where you can see they are just absolutely storming the streets. There are so many of them just running around the city. Who is going to stop them? Well, none other then the great Batman himself, where Batman is overlooking the city. I feel like I need to turn off the lights for this one, but if you look closely, he's actually having a conversation with Kate Kane over on the other side of the rooftop. So perhaps they are planning to coordinate their attack, or maybe one is telling the other to stay out of their turf. You decide. Of course, with the Batman theming, I had to put all the different Arkham Asylum and Gotham themed vehicles here, where we have, from the Batman universe, all sorts of different police cars and transports making their way through the city, with the policemen making sure that this maybe potentially important prisoner transport is being overseen very carefully. But wait, over here, there's a traveling troop of elephants, which is also traveling around the city. Why are they here? Does this make any sense? I have no idea, but you know what? The elephants are here, they're kind of car size, and I just thought it would be really fun to incorporate some different fun aspects into the city as well. Of course, every single modular building LEGO has ever made is here, and I did try to group together the ones that made the most sense together. The Brick Bank is in the Financial District area, as well as Assembly Square, which is focused on a lot of smaller shops, and then the Town Hall, which I felt went very nicely with the other dark orange building, which is the Corner Garage here. Now, going all the way around this side, we'll go to the middle in a second. We have some of the other creator mini modulars here, as well as some of the LEGO Friends sets. We have an art school from LEGO Friends, a LEGO Friends modern hotel, the Assembly Theater, which is a really cool set with a LEGO Elves reference too, or perhaps the worlds of LEGO Elves have merged into this. And of course, we do have a lot of other stuff here. There's great detail in terms of the LEGO Friends assembly buildings, and there's even a nice little park area for people to hang out with Admittedly, these lampposts being ones that I wanted to stock up on so I could add throughout the entire city. Now, the main street itself is quite busy. There is a lot going on down this main street of the Duck Brick City here. First of all, there are some Lego hidden side vehicles. There's a converted fire truck. There's a converted school bus there. Perhaps some ghosts are on the loose. But oh wait, speaking of ghosts on the loose, who are you going to call? The Ghostbusters, of course, the Ecto-1, both versions of them from the reboot as well as the original movie are ready for action coming out of the Ghostbusters firehouse where the Ghostbusters themselves are keeping a careful watch over the city. Whereas you can see, if you look closely around, there might be some ghosts running around the city as well if you're not careful. Some Slimers and some more. Now, of course, there are some other iconic vehicles here. There is the Mystery Machine from Scooby-Doo. We have OK Plumbing from Home Alone. Let's see what else we have. We have the DeLorean from Back to the Future. There's all sorts of iconic LEGO references and buildings, and perhaps even the worlds of LEGO Bionicle have merged into the city, because crossing the crosswalks, there are some little LEGO Bionicle figurines as well. So somehow, they have made their way into the world of the minifigures. Over here, we have the Lego Botanical Garden. This is a beautiful build which actually turns the Lego Friends Botanical Garden into a modular building footprint, which you can see right there, right alongside the Lego Store, which is an official Lego BrickLink AFOL Designer Program set, which is a really nice modern looking Lego store that honestly feels like some of the ones you would see in big cities. Now, moving onwards, we have some other great buildings here. We have the shops and restaurants here. We have the fire brigade, of course, ready to stop any fires that may erupt in the city. And naturally, we do have 
the OG, the Cafe Corner, which is the original Lego modular building making a very prominent appearance in the city itself. All the city is bustling with life and honestly, it's a little bit hard to see it over all the noise. Now, here we have a Lunar New Year parade going down the street. Somehow the street has been cordoned off to celebrate the Lunar New Year with one of these specialized parade floats making its way down the center of the street. An absolutely beautiful design here and I really like how I was able to integrate that into the road itself. Here's what we can take a look down the street if I can really get our view in here. So you can take a look at all the festivities going on down this particular street and there's some traffic backed up as well. Thankfully, this road is pretty empty, so you can actually see there's a lot of detail on this road. There's a bus going down the road here, there's a taxi, but oh wait, watch out because some villains are making their way through the Marvel Universe here. The Daily Bugle is all the way up here. It is easily the tallest building in the city, but once Avengers Tower comes out, well, that one might dwarf even this. We do have the Sanctum Sanctorum here. Doctor Strange is at the ready, emerging from a portal directly in front of his sanctum, ready for action, so the world's of the multiverse are colliding and of course given that marvel movies are so popular i had to put the palace cinema across from that because who doesn't love a good movie after watching a climactic superhero showdown moving onwards to this part of the street here again we do have these buildings on the back and then we get to a slightly older area of town these are, of course, the older modulars. One of them is a little bit dilapidated. This one's actually falling apart a bit near the top. And maybe this is one of the areas of the city that is a little more run down. It might need some repairs. You've got bits and pieces of Market Street here. You've got an old pet shop. And perhaps this area of the city might be one of the oldest areas that has slowly been overtaken by the infrastructure and the massive growth. Because after all, there is literally a gigantic construction tower building stuff right across from it. Now, right here is a little tiny cute area for just some solitude. You can get a chance to relax by the water. This is a tranquil Chinese style garden. And what better way to unwind than to just relax by this particular modular style street, which just looks so good wedged in between the two buildings here and really just makes for a really nice corner to close everything off. Of course, next to the Daily Bugle is the police station because the Daily Bugle is often the site of many super villain attacks. So you must have the police station next to it, although to be honest, I don't know if they're doing as good a job as Spider-Man is, who of course is swinging directly into action, although his multiverse companions are nowhere to be found, but maybe they might be scattered around the merged worlds over here. And honestly, of course, with the Marvel heroes, there is the Avengers Tower, where you can see all the way in the back there is the current largest Avengers Tower they have made, although depending on when this video releases, the bigger one might be out. But of course, the Avengers Tower is a big part of LEGO City, where you've got Miles Morales leaping off of the top, ready for his leap of faith, and of course, the Avengers operating out of the tower itself. This is... Duck Brick City. I will come up with a better name for this than Duck Brick City. I'm gonna be honest, Duck Brick City is kind of lame. We'll come up with something cool when I completely redo the city. Folks, comment your suggestions for the name of the city down in the comments below. But I hope you enjoyed this look at this massive Lego layout. This has honestly been an undertaking that has taken months and months of work. And to be completely honest, I am not happy 100% with the layout of the city. There's so many details I want to update, so many details I want to change. For instance, the road plates. These all need to have 1x4 tiles to close them out, and ideally, I've left them open because I want to build a monorail going around the entirety of the city. Imagine a monorail snaking above the roofs. I'm actually from Seattle, so... I would love to see a monorail actually attached to the buildings and go around. That's going to be in phase two of the city. And one of the other biggest issues with the city is that, well, I can't reach the middle part. Yes, this street is empty due to supervillain attacks, but I'm going to be honest. It's empty because I can't reach the inside. So I would love to really reconfigure the city and reconfigure the entire way I have this set up. And that's honestly my next project. This city started off with just using three of these. One, two, three. It expanded with one more and then one more still. And obviously, there's like two more modular buildings coming out this year and there's no more space. So I need to be really optimized in terms of what we include in future iterations of the city, but definitely stay tuned for that. And I hope you enjoyed this look at Lego Duck Bricks City, name pending, definitely something I want to workshop, but there it is, the full city layout. 
All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at my massive Lego Duck Brick City, where, wait, wait a second. Hold on. The, the city looks completely different. What happened? Well, you'll have to wait and see what happened in my next video where I completely tore it down and rebuilt it from scratch. But that was version one of Duck Brick City, and I hope you enjoyed our little tour before everything was torn down and we started again. Thanks for watching this video. This has been a very long time in the making. Again, the introduction to this video was filmed in January of 2023. This was before I even filmed LEGO Masters. In fact, before I even knew I would be on LEGO Masters and was intended to be released for the 100,000 sub special, which happened while I was filming the show. And it's just been so crazy ever since. I honestly kind of forgot to even do a video on the city itself until I got the idea to reconfigure it. And you know what? I figured let's do a full on tour and talk through the creation of the city one last time before everything went down and was rebuilt. But of course, that's a different video, so stay tuned for that video coming out at some point soon. Hope you enjoyed this one, thanks so much for watching this tour of the original Duckbrick City, and stay tuned because there are so much more developments on the way. Thanks all and bye for now.